Dice que no, ¿verdad? No lo sé. No, dice que no puede, pero voy a ya, ya ver. Exacto. Ahí sí. No llegó. Microphone. Fíjese que, fíjese que se había inscrito y no llegó. Y yo me quedé así como que. No sé quién es Alex Clavel. Axel Clavel. Hola, ¿qué tal? Hola, soy yo. Ah, hola, Axel. Este. Oh, yo no sé. Aquí no estaba ahí. Ahí está. Mira. Este es el caso. Este es el caso. Bien roto. ¿Qué está? Bien roto. ¿Se bueno, dijo que se iba a... Y ese... Ahorita vamos a ver qué dice. Good evening, teacher, classmates. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. So, let's see. Uh, okay. Just check something. So, everybody did the uh, homework. Nobody had any problem? Me, teacher, last exercise. Oh, okay. oh homework. Yeah, I, I thought that it was everything fine. Let me just check it out. I write equal in in this box. Okay. So let me just check. Okay, is the three point three right? Okay, so here's it. I just made it. So, uh, well, let's check together just in case you have some questions. Okay, so the first one is going to be it is too late to go to the concert. Period. It started an hour ago. Period. Okay. Okay. The next one, uh, yeah, the next one is going to be, he's too young to drive a car and that's it. Yeah. The next one is, my grandfather is too old to play those games. Number one. Number four, I am too tired to do my homework. And the last one, the package is too heavy to lift. Ah, okay, there is an error here. Yeah, yeah probably. The, the, error. the error is that you have to put a period here. I don't know why the period is there. 
there are two periods. Uh, let me check if I have it here. Two periods? Yeah. Okay. okay. Have to live. To live in the period, yeah. Ah. But there is and, an error. And no capillar, no capillar letter? No, it's uh, the just a period. This? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That will be. And then a period. So for everybody, if you have problems with that one, that will be the, the way that the platform is going to take the answer. Okay, so. That happens sometimes. That's why I like to, to check because sometimes I know that there are some errors. Teacher, entonces no lleva punto o lleva punto la oración? Lleva dos puntos. Uh, Lift, period. Okay. And then you. at the end. Yeah. Okay. It's not correct, of course, but that is the way that the platform is going to take that one. Okay. Good. And the class of tonight is going to be this one, okay? Uh, the, well, we checked that already, so we are not going to actually check into that one. Before we move on, we're going to check about the attendance, of course. Okay, Ada Patricia Linares Galdamez. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Alejandra Michelle Hueso Najera. Ana Selmi Chévez. Present teacher. Good. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erasu. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdamez. Here, teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Present. Good evening. Good evening. Manuel Antonio Palma. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Silvia Soleima Rodríguez de González. Present, teacher. Good. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present, teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Present. Good. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Very good. Okay, so we are going to start with a little video. As usual, we're going to, we're going to watch the video and then uh, provide opinions, comments on that one. It's very important also for the videos. Whenever you see a video, uh, to check the pronunciation, the vocabulary, the grammar, everything all together, but of course to get the main idea so we can discuss about that. Okay. So here we go. You've heard the phrase move fast and break things. Facebook made it famous, but really Mark just made the mistake of saying it out loud and putting it on company posters. By the way, Mark and I are not on a first-name basis. <laughs> but sometimes using the first names of our leaders reminds us that leadership is a practice of imperfect humans leading imperfect humans. That's why it's so hard. How's it going, Elon? <laughs> Move fast and break things is still a widely held belief that we can either make progress or take care of each other, one or the other. That a certain amount of wreckage is the price we have to pay for inventing the future. My wife and I have spent the last decade helping companies clean up this wreckage. And one of the main lessons from our work is that the trade-off at the heart of this worldview is false. The most effective leaders we know solve problems at an accelerated pace, while also taking responsibility 
for the success and the well-being of their customers and employees and shareholders. They move fast and fix things. Now, what's come out of our work is something of a playbook for fixing problems quickly, whether it's a broken company culture or a struggling friendship. And so, what I want to do with you today is invite you to try on this playbook over the course of an imaginary week. So, how this is going to work is I'm going to give you an agenda for each day of the week: Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You see where this is going. And then I want you to go home and try it and see how much progress you can make. Does that sound reasonable? Okay. I'm seeing some signs of consent. Thank you. Start by thinking of a problem that you're having right now that involves at least one other person: your kids, your co-founders, your customers, etc. Now, in our imaginary week, it's now Monday morning. Now, Monday morning gets a bad rap, but we like to think of it as the gift of renewal that comes around every seven days. <laughs> On Monday, your task is to figure out what your real problem is. Which may not be the problem that you thought you had just a minute ago, because here's the thing: as human beings, we tend to be overconfident in the quality of our thoughts, particularly when it comes to diagnosing our own problems. My investors don't get it. My Gen Z employees are entitled. My dog is mad at me. <laughs> Let's find out if you're right. The thing that's going to help you out most today is your own curiosity. So turn that original diagnosis, my Gen Z employees are entitled, into a question rather than a statement. What's going on with my Gen Z employees? Now your next move sounds obvious, but you might be surprised to learn how infrequently people actually do it. Talk directly to the other people who have a stake in your problem. Ask them things you might not normally ask in polite company. Things that require a little courage on your part. Now, as I look around the room, and I'm being a little presumptuous, I suspect this is going to be hard for some of you. I get it. I come from a very waspy family. There were three approved topics of conversation: the pets, the weather, and Tom broke off for some reason. <laughs> But sometimes, just a single brave conversation can reveal an entirely new structure to your problem. Some of you will discover, for example, that you have a role to play in creating the problem that you're now solving this week. Instead of your Gen Z employees being entitled, for example, you might discover it's you who feels entitled to burn them out and pay them less than what they're worth simply because that was the broken work contract that you put up with at their age. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just spitballing up here. But what I do know is that whatever it is you learn today, you're going to be closer to understanding what's really getting in the way of the relationship or the organization or the life you want. All right, excellent first day, everyone. Get some rest. Now it's Tuesday. On Tuesday, your job is to run a smart experiment in how to solve your problem. Start by creating a good enough plan to strengthen the relationship at the center of it. Now, a good enough plan is distinct from a perfect plan, which is an elusive, fantastical creature that has never actually been spotted in the wild. We tend to think about problems through the lens of trust. So, one prompt that often helps on Tuesday is, "What could you do tomorrow to build more trust than you did today?" For one team we were working with, they decided to stop texting each other about each other in the middle of meetings. Someone else we were coaching decided that it was time to come clean to his co-founders that he was ready to move on from the business. Another leader decided that it was time for him to take full responsibility for the unintended harms of a product that he designed. Is your good enough plan going to work? Probably not. Statistically, not on the first try. That's why I'm giving you all week to figure it out, but also to make the inevitable, unavoidable mistakes. The purpose of Tuesday is not to get it right. The purpose of Tuesday is to learn. It's to get into the sandbox of your life and give yourself permission to play. All right, go and have the adult beverage of your choice, which you have definitely earned. Now it's Wednesday. On Wednesday, your job is to do something that adults generally don't like to do. It's to make new friends. 
But the research is really clear that whatever problem you're trying to solve this week, you're going to be better at solving it with people who don't already think like you do. I know you've heard this before many times, but today is your chance to practice. So describe your good enough plan, the one you came up with yesterday, to someone whose life experience has been materially different from yours. If you've been at the company for a decade, talk to someone who started last week. If you're a white partner, talk to a black partner. If you're queer like me, talk to the straightest person you can find. <laughs> Contrary to what you may have heard recently, they're everywhere. <laughs> And when you're done with that conversation, have another conversation with someone else who's different from you on some other gorgeous dimension of the human experience. This is going to take you all day. And some of you are going to be surprised to discover that it's your favorite day of the week. At the end of the day, you're going to be smiling, and your good enough plan is going to be an even better plan. Okay, now it's Thursday. Good morning. It's Thursday. You're unstoppable. Thursday is storytelling day. As humans, we need stories to make sense of change, to find our place in the script of it. Stories also help us to activate all the other people around us. Whose help we're going to need with that change? Stories have three parts: past, present, future. We often skip over that past part in moments of big change. We did some work with Uber when it was going through its very public crisis in leadership. And when the new guy came in, the new CEO, and hosted his first all hands meeting, he committed to retain the edge that had made Uber a force of nature. Now this line was met with thunderous applause, the applause of relief. He also joined in a standing ovation for his predecessor, who also happened to be in the room that day. I was so struck by the grace of this choice, and that's the word I want you to bring to your own storytelling. Listen, Uber had serious problems to solve, as anyone reading the news could figure out, but the people in that room had built something extraordinary. And they had something real to lose in an uncertain future. Instead of setting himself up as some kind of company savior, the new guy honored that complicated truth. Honor the complicated truth of the people around you, the ones who aren't so sure about all your big plans. Then tell us why you want to change things. Finally, tell us about the future in vivid and specific language. Tell us what it's going to feel like when your story becomes our reality. All right, it's Friday. It's Friday, and you're almost done. I promise. The payoff of Friday, the payoff of this whole week of hard work, is that you now get to move fast, because you're far less likely to break things. So do everything you decided to do over the last week, but now do it with a sense of urgency. Urgency releases the energy in a system. It makes it clear to everyone that you take the problem seriously. So whatever administrative hurdles, whatever unproductive process is in the way of taking action today, just strip it out. Just refuse to tolerate it. People ask us all the time about the optimal timing for big change, and our answer is almost always the same: How about now? Now seems good. Take action now, and then learn from whatever happens next. And at the end of this day, at the end of this week. Your even better plan, your even better plan, has a chance of being a great plan. All right, that's it. That's your week. Congratulations, you did it as you rest and recover, which is essential. I want to leave you with one final thought. I spend my time helping leaders to change and evolve, and no one has ever said to me, "I wish I had taken longer and done less." What I do hear again and again is the opposite, and so my invitation to you today is to practice, to practice taking less time to do more of the things that will make your relationships, and your teams, and your organizations stronger. And to be honest, you have my blessing to take longer than a week to get it done. What I don't want you to do is to take months or even years, which tends to be our default timeline. For solving hard problems, most of our problems deserve 
a more urgent response. Most of our problems deserve a metabolic rate that honors the frustration and the mediocrity and the real pain of the status quo for some of you. Thank you. <laughs> so whether your name is Mark or Elon or Chris, thank you for having me, or Anne, find out what happens when you move fast and fix things and decide that the moment that matters most is right now. Thank you. Okay, so what did we learn? What did you get from the video? The first point, teacher, in my case, I didn't understand her jokes. <laughs> <laughs> the first point. Okay. The second point, um, I respect her points, but it, in general, I believe that the practice is a, is a solution, inclusive the management the manage of problems in the organization, because it's part of the job. In general, when you work with the other people, it's normal. There are a lot of problems, but it's part of the the skills you um, that you need to to learn. The how is the way for a uh, way what. Uh, what is the best way to resolve the problems? This is my opinion, teacher. That's it. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, yes, yeah, sometimes some jokes okay. in English are kind of uh, difficult to get, so, but that is normal. Okay, so, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, it, it was really, really interesting the way she explains uh, how to solve uh, how to fix any problem at work. And uh, uh, a main point was that uh, the central strategy to, to solve pro problem with a coaching approach, but she was obviously a very good coach, organizational coach, was really, the, the five steps were really basic. At first, identify your real problem. You know, sometimes we call 10 people, 10 colleagues from our, uh, our organization to identify a problem and we make it more complicated than it could be because people don't like to identify a problem and they always make it very diplomatic, you know, very diplomatic way. The second, uh, on it is for the second step, uh, she invite us to to be brave, but by identify what is really happening in the organization or with the people or with your family or with your friends, and don't be afraid to put the finger direct to the point. What everybody could be afraid or, or ashamed uh, by identifying the real problem. Uh, they are, uh, it is happening in the moment. And the third invitation was to invite, uh, it was a, the Wednesday, uh, how to solve the final strategy, how to, to solve the problem with trust. It is very important that the teams uh, feel trust, you know, to speak really, to speak really open. And I, the, um, the, the place, the atmosphere is really a trust, a trust invited. And it, it was really nice. It, 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 would, it would find so, so important that the, the, the most of us could catch 
this idea when we are identifying problems the most important things is to learn not to indicate who is um culpa whose fault who has, is it? ah who is the his, the fault or responsible for it is more an opportunity to learn to discover what we can do better if we have failed or we, if we can solve a problem together as a real team. The another one was really interesting because she invited us to make new friends. And it was a, it was meaning that the most of the time we need to invite people to solve problems that not see uh, those not things like we do it must be it must be inclusive uh, people that think different as the, uh, than we are, we we do because it's bring enrichment it enrich it is very important to have different opinion different approach to solve the problem and the, the technique of storytelling uh, it, uh, un, uh, by identify past, present, future, and be brave to, to challenge the people about uh, which story we want to build by together by solving this uh, problem. It is also really effective, you know? by storytelling all obviously you need to manage the storytelling technique you know but it is a very good technique to invite the uh, the participants uh, of 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 the teams to the, uh, for the creativity to identify the solutions for for the problem and the last one i i have taken note was you know uh, the this nowadays we live in uncertainty situations, you know, the uncertainty, the vulnerabilities uh, are really so, make so complicate the, the management of the organization that you need to go as fast as you can. You cannot not wait until next year to, evolve, to and let evolve that problem. You really are invited nowadays with such uncertainty, uh, uncertainty situation and the high vulnerability of uh, of the frame of the economic frame, so economic and social framework that you need to act fast with good decision, with good teams. But you know, it is better to create a sense of urgent, urgent or urgently? Urgent. Of urgent and invite everybody to participate to identify solution so, so fast as they can do. Very, very good, yes. perfect. That was a very nice wrap up, very nice. And you're right, uh, here that one is, uh, is something that we say, yes, that is the way it should be, do. What she said, ah, that is another story, right? That is different. So, for example, to to create a trust environment, that is very difficult. That is not easy at all. It was that word that I have forgotten, environment. To create a trust environment. Thank you. So, that is a pleasure. And uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, that people come confidently and tell you, you know, we need to change this process. Well, I don't feel comfortable about this uh, and that the boss or human resources says, okay, sit down and tell me more about it. So it's not that, that it's, it's human nature that sometimes we, instead of saying that to the boss, we say that to people outside of the company, you know, in my company, this is happening, it's not good. That happens a lot, but it shouldn't be that way. It should be with the boss, I mean, with the person that it, is there to help you but sometimes, I mean, there are many situations, right? But it's, it's a very good thing. Thank you. Any other comments or opinion on the video?
excuse me, and I agree with Anna Selmy. The jokes were very difficult to understand. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it happens. Do you remember this? We, we discussed about that before, right? That sometimes, uh, depending on what you want to achieve in the presentation, sometimes you have different strategies, right? Telling jokes is one, but you need to be sure that it's going to work, right? So even in high levels, sometimes that happen. And it's not just because of the language. Sometimes, I mean, uh, as we discussed, sometimes language makes sense with the, with the jokes, but sometimes it's like, wow, what she said that so, yeah, after, after 35 years living in El Salvador, sometimes I cannot understand the jokes, the Salvadorian jokes, you know? For me, it's really difficult. And they are a lot of doppel sense, you know? Ah, yeah. 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 It belongs to the culture. And now, yeah, I have to recognize that I, I, I do not understand these jokes. That is so true. That here in El Salvador, it's really similar to Mexico, double sense. Uh, that, is, that is something very popular in each and uh, every level. I mean, you are in a very nice, fancy dinner. And they are saying jokes like that one, so it's like, okay. Uh, and I know that there are other countries, but it's not like that. It, even when they speak Spanish, yes, there are double sense jokes, but it's not that common. There are different kinds of jokes so that happens. Very good. Uh, any other comments or opinion on the video? Okay. So yesterday we were talking about this part. So uh, how to write a paragraph. Uh, if, as you remember, the first part is the topic sentence, that is like the introduction. Then we have one or two, uh, let's say, supporting uh, parts, and then the closing. So today we're gonna, since just yesterday we're telling me something about that one, we're gonna discuss about a little bit more about the parts of essays. This is not part of the book, it's not part of the program, uh, but it's important as we discussed yesterday. So I decided to bring something else and then we're going to do a little exercise. We are not going to write an essay because that is too much, but yes, we're going to write a paragraph, okay? With the three parts, supporting ideas and the topic and then the conclusion. So uh, let's check about this one, three parts of essays. Let's see. Is going to start reading uh, Susana Beatriz. Hey, teacher. Hello. To par, to par, ace, ac. He says. Ah, uh, he says. He says. He says consi consisting and uh, consisting. In of an introduction on my body and a conclusion are referent to a three part AC. You may you you may be used to this AC <laughs> format Easy. from is a is a from format from school. In the introduction, uh, the read is introduced to the topic that will be discussed discussed. discussed. Um, discuss, discuss, and to argument that will be present. After the introduction come the main uh, part of the text, uh, where, where the analyst, analysis and analysis and discussions are carried out and results are present. Depending on the left of the easy, easy, <laughs> easy. <laughs> the body section uh, may or may not be divided into different sections. In the final part of final the part, part on the easy, <laughs> the argument will be summed uh, up and conclusion will be drawn from what had been a discussion in the body. Okay, so this is the introduction of the parts of the essay. So it's something like that, what we do in a paragraph or in an essay. 
at the beginning, we're going to uh, explain a little bit what is this about. So you engage people, right? So then it's going to be like the supporting details or, or the body of the essays. And then the conclusion that is like, well, as as you say yesterday, or as, as conclusion or anything like that. Okay, so this is the structure of the three parts of essay. Uh, as you see here, this is something that kids in the United States and other parts of the world, they start writing essays um, around fifth grade. So when they finish and they go to the university, this is something that they really know how to do. I mean, even in public schools that are very basic, they, they know how to do that one. Of course, in private schools, they put more emphasis and more professionalism into certain details, uh, but everybody can. The same happened here in El Salvador or in any in Spanish country. We learn this, but sometimes uh, there is not a lot of emphasis. To this. We learn that for you to write different kinds of of writings. Let's say an anecdote is different than a story that is different than a biography, for example. It has different parts, but an essay is something that we don't see that much. So each section of the text needs to be structured in a way that helps the reader understand the arguments and the points that the writer wishes to make. And he is the first part. This is the introduction, okay? So let's see. Um, Rosalena, please help me with this part. Okay, structure of the three part is it takes each section of the next needs to be structured in a way that helps the reader understand the argument and the points that the writer wishes to make. Introduction. Introduction. The main purpose of the introduction is to provide the reader with a clear idea of the focus and aim of the text. The topic of the essay article is presented in the introduction, often accompanied by a thesis statement, the claim that the writer wishes to make. Depending on the type of essay, the introduction section also provides the context background of the argument, introduce the theoric theoretical perspectives, terminology, etc. that will be used to explain how the writing will be organized. All the information in the introduction must be relevant to the points that are sec subsequently made in the body of the text. The introduction is usually structured to start with a broad or general description of the topic and the gradually narrow down to the specific focus of the same. Read more about the structure of the introductions here. Okay, so so what did you get from the introduction? What is that in your own words? In a few words, the introductions, the introduction, <laughs> how to be clear and, and and make it easy to understand by the by the reader. I think that is important because if you don't understand the introduction, uh, you're gonna say, "Oh, what I'm what I what I'm reading, I don't know." Maybe. So that is it. So uh, yes, I mean, the introduction for example, is as, as, for I example. Ah, sorry, Richard. For example, when I when I choose a book and I only see the title all the time, I read the, the introduction to know what I'm going to read. If it's attractive for me, okay, I continue, but it's this and no, okay, not like it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I do it, I do that. <laughs> so yeah, that is it. I mean, the introduction is not only the topic, but uh, depending on how complex is the topic that you're going to discuss, you need to to provide the context of the thing. I mean, we can discuss something like very 
very simple, like for example, being on time for class, English class is important because blah, blah, blah. So we can have something like that or something that is more, more complex. So for example, I don't know, uh, it can be like uh, uh, the, uh, the way people is managing uh, sex abuse in companies. That is a very complex topic. And then we need to provide a context. Before, or years ago, it was very common that some men, they, I mean, we need to provide some context. So depending on the topic is going to be that. Uh, and uh, provides, I mean, that. The background uh, introduce the perspective. I mean, because in that one, the first part, you're going to be clear what is your, your point of view So about something. So it's important to do this or this something that is been happening or we need to change. For example, the weather, the climate it has to be changed the way that we handle here the earth by government, something like that. So you are going to express things like that. Uh, it's kind of easy. I don't see uh, lots of problems with that one. So let's check about the body. Um, let's see. Susana Hernandez, please help me with this. Okay, teacher, with body? Yeah, please. Okay. Body. After introduction comes the main part of the text, which is often referred to as the body, where the analysis and discussion will be carried out and results are presented. What is brought up in this part of the next text relates back to the what was present in the introduction. Depending on discipline, aim, is the word? Aim? Aim, yeah. Aim in context. There are various ways of structuring the body of this. A basic strategy is to deal with one thing at a time and to order the different issues that are brought up in a logical sequence that makes the argument easy to follow. Depending on the left, the essay, the body may or may not be divided into different sections. Note that there is never a Having colored body in essays. This word is only used when talking about this essay format to signal that in the bulk of the easy text. Okay, what do you get from this? I don't know what it's say. Okay, an essay is like a writing that you do with this structure, with the introduction. Okay. Then there are two or three or four, up to four uh, paragraphs that are supporting ideas, and then a conclusion. It's like when you speak about a problematic, imagine that I say to you, you're going to suppose about the weather change. So you, at the beginning, uh, you are going to say where the weather or the climate in the world is right now changing, and we, the world, we need to do something about that one. That is the introduction. And then you start with the body that is this part. So since 1975, uh, the weather has been changing. Some scientists, they are saying that uh, the, the glacials in the north and in the south, they are melting. And this is causing that the, I mean, you are supporting your idea, the introduction. And then okay. there is a conclusion, right? That, that is the next one. Okay, you explain, you explain everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I say I say the idea. So, but that is important yes. because, uh, as we were discussing, when you do the certification, the TOEFL, uh, there is a part where you need to write an essay. I think no. it's important when this paragraph say, um, when you need order, order logical. Yeah, yeah, that is it. So it's like, it's exactly as, as when you are exposing, right? You have an introduction, you have some details to reinforce what you are, what is your point of view, and then a conclusion. That will be it. It's very, very similar to that one. Uh, well, what is AIM? Anybody knows what is AIM? AIM is like objective. Objective, yeah, like a target that you are pointing to, target. right? You are pointed to. Very good. And of course, the last part is the conclusion. Uh, let's see. Adriana Stephanie. Yes, teacher. 
Not possible. Uh, Walter Mauricio. Conclusion. Yes? Yes, please. Okay. In the final part of the essay, the argument is summed out and conclusion are drawn from what has been discussed. And generally, conclusion should not contain a new fact or ideas, but instead provide a brief, a brief instrument of the main argument that had been presented in the essay. The conclusion might refer back to introduction and comment on this statement or the research question and present there in some text it is a preparer to include a look forward in the form of suggestion for further study for instance okay hey, what did you get in your own words in conclusion excuse me let me see Is the general picture, the general different situation uh, is a, 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 we had a, a different ideas and it's a, a good uh, conclusion. The, the 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 part the introduction the comments uh, are different are different uh, topics okay. so that is it right so uh the conclusion is like when you sum up when you wrap up and then provide a conclusion of the topic and it's very interesting what it says at the end so depending on what you're talking about if this is a thesis then you also provide suggestions so what we need to do is blah, 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 so something like that right okay and um what is everybody what is brief a brief is like a short in a short way okay and a uh, restatement is like to, to say again something. So we say something at the beginning of the topic, and a restatement is like we say that in a different way. Okay, and let's check the video. I guess I have the volume here. Hi, I'm Ellen. In this video, I'm going to look at the three-part essay. The three-part essay is a writing format that consists of introduction, body, and conclusion. If you've been asked to write an essay, and you haven't had any further instructions about structure, then the three-part essay is where you should begin. It is, in fact, the basis of all types of formal writing. You might wonder why you need to follow a strict format in your essay writing. Perhaps you wish instead that you could be more creative. Well, since academic writing aims at presenting and discussing facts and research-based results to an audience already interested in the topic, Clarity and trustworthiness are more important ingredients than the kind of attention-grabbing features that you will find in a piece of fiction or perhaps a newspaper article or advertisement. Academic writing, as well as reports in the corporate world, differ from fiction in a number of ways. You're not writing a novel with narrative twists and turns that enhance the element of surprise. Academic audiences don't like surprises. Any piece of academic writing in the formal register will have an anticipated structure and readers will know from the outset what to expect. In other words, the transparency of text structure enables writers to efficiently communicate their discussions and their results to their readers. Let's now have a closer look at the three elements of the essay, the introduction, the body and the conclusion. 
The introduction is the first part of the essay. Its function is to present the topic of the text to the reader and more specifically to raise a question and present the claim that will be made in the essay. This is often referred to as the research question and the claim the thesis statement. There are two distinct types of information that you need in an introduction. Firstly, you need to provide some kind of background and contextual information to frame the discussion. And secondly, the argument that you're making in the essay has to be introduced. This means that the introduction is the place where you as a writer will have to pinpoint what your argument will be and equally important, state how you will present it. Some kind of mapping statement is helpful to the reader. This is a blueprint of the essay outline that will give the reader a preview of what you will present. After the introduction comes the main part of the essay, the body. Depending on the length of the essay, the body will consist of a number of paragraphs, or in the case of a longer essay, of a number of sections divided into paragraphs. Regardless of whether the essay is short or long, the body of the essay is where the discussion takes place and where the results are presented. The structure of the body of the essay depends on the kind of argument you present and, of course, on the type of analysis carried out in the essay. The body of the essay will also differ in appearance depending on your discipline. A common format for scholarly texts is the so-called IMRAD structure. IMRAD stands for Introduction, Method, Results and Discussion. Here the body of the essay consists of methods, results and discussion parts. The last part of any essay is the conclusion. This is where you sum up your argument. No new facts, results or ideas should be introduced at this stage, although you could point out topics or angles for further possible studies. Conclusions are usually rather brief, perhaps one or two paragraphs in a short essay. Perhaps you've also heard of the five paragraph essay. The classic so-called five paragraph essay consists of one introductory paragraph, three body paragraphs and a concluding paragraph. So, as you can see, this type of essay format is just one form of the three-part essay structure. Longer essays, such as bachelor degree essays and master's theses, use the extended version of this same format. However, in these cases, you'll find that you'll need to divide your discussion up into sections. Structure-wise, a longer text is thus similar to a shorter one. Each section will be structured according to the three-part format, including an introductory passage, a body where the argument and analysis will be found, and a concluding passage, which will also provide a transition to the next section. Okay, so as you see here, uh... This is like formal writing, academic writing. Actually, that is the concept, academic writing. And that's why the structure is pretty important. As you see uh, in this video, there are different um, kinds of essays. We are not going to check into that one because that is too complicated. The most basic is the one with the word check. Introduction, the body that can be two paragraphs, I guess is good enough. And then uh, the, the conclusion. Okay, and if you remember your university, the thesis at the university, this is exactly what it says. It's like creating a thesis with a problem, then the analysis, I mean, the body, uh, the details to support your, your statement, and then the conclusion, what to do for this. So it's exactly that one. Okay, uh, do you have any questions so far? No, I have no any question, but it is important that if we if we wish to take part in the TOEFL or IELTS um, exam, that really we start right now. That is like your previous video. You need to start right now to practice how to write in inside. And you know, in internet, you can find a lot of um classes you know about how to write an essay and examples etc you know but it is really a question also of time when you are participating in such a test you you need to write you you you, are, you, you would be given a topic 
And you need to write. And you need to have all the preposition, the adjective, the verbs, everything you have in mind. Uh, obviously, if you have practiced it. Okay, very good. Perfect. Actually, you said it exactly the way it is. I mean, writing an essay is not only these three parts. You need to use the language, the vocabulary. For example, you cannot repeat words a lot of times, but, 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 but no. It's not possible, right? It's not going to be professional. You need to use but and then the next one, however, or any other word that is going to be similar, uh, but not the same. So there are things like preposition is a big problem for us that we speak Spanish and we then try to speak in English because in English we have a lot of other prepositions. I mean, uh, it's not the same to say uh, into that onto, right, for example. So uh, those little things are the objective of this part of the TOEFL. And as my best said, and that's what I bring this topic to you, we need to start right now, right? We cannot wait one week before the tests. I mean, that is in the Salvadorian way, but it's not good, right? So uh, it shouldn't be that way. So that's why I bring this topic to you uh, because yesterday it was like the introduction for that kind of topic in the, in the book, but we can move on. We can check some other right you remember that we also check about the period usage uh, the purpose uh, the article the many things we have checked are going to be including this one and as my best said also and actually I have here this uh, little thing that is a website uh, you can go online and you can find a lot of uh, websites this website itself is going to show you a lot a lot of examples of essays i have this one for example that is the importance of dress code at business interview so that is the topic and that is what is going to happen in the TOEFL, as my said in the TOEFL, they are going to give you a topic it's not that you are going to say oh i'm going to write about proposals because that is a very popular topic no, they are going to tell you this is, I mean, they, as I remember, they give you two or three topics and you choose one and then you start writing, right? You have a certain time, that is a lot of time, so you can write that one. So, but then you have to have at least the idea of the structure of how to write. Okay, and we're going to read this example. Uh, so you have an idea that is not going to be a big deal, but we need to start practicing, right? So this one it says uh, the importance of dress code. We're going to read only the first part, okay? Uh, because we have, yeah, this is it. I mean, it's, it's the whole thing. We are going to read it all because it's no big deal. Uh, let's see. It's going to start reading. Okay, the first two paragraphs. Uh, Wendy Maribel. Okay. The importance of the red call at business interview. Sorry. Okay. Um, mainly in Canada, your attire is your identifying while identity. appearing. Sorry? Identity. Identity. Your identity while appearing in leading. Leading the business and job interview. It should be appropriate as it displays you you are wearing what is totally regarding the job interview you are going to do because professionals always appear like a gentle, gentleman in Canada while doing professional work. It is commonly say that book in, is not John, John, Judge. John, John, by its cover. But here the term rever reverses here your um, personality. Adventure. Um, I don't see. Sorry. You're, I don't know. 
River, Riverside hear your personality that portrayed by a V. Via. Via, via your dress code during interviews, which in result both both up your confidence and encourage you to do it with a full enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Okay, then. Enthusiasm. Very good, very good. So as you can see, the first paragraph is the introduction, right? Mainly in Canada, your attire is your identity while appearing and leading the business job interviews. It should be appropriate as it plays your, well, there is an error, as it displays you, uh, what you are wearing and what is totally regarding your, your interview you are going to do because professionals always appear like a gentleman in Canada while doing professional interviews. So that is the introduction. Why it's important to wear or to be careful about your dress code when you go to an interview. You can see that that is very clear the introduction, okay? And words like this one are usually uh, common in essays. I mean, your attire, do you know what is attire? Clothes. Your clothes, uh -huh. the way that you dress, yes. that is it. Correct. But you don't say clothes because this is professional. So you are going to use attire, right? So that is it. Uh, that you are going to look for some words that are kind of professional, fancy. Not all the words are like that. But yes, you need to use a few, a few words that are going to be like that, right? So uh, it shows very nice, very professional. Okay. That's why writing is a very important part of, of when, when you are learning English, it's something very good. Okay. Let's read the other two paragraphs. Uh, Maybe, could you please help me with that? Uh, up image? Uh, yes, image. Okay. In image at front of the interviewer or the audience, as well as your colleagues, when you are representing the whole criteria. At that time, your dress speaks with your words. In other words, the individuals or interviewers who are unknown at the same time, so when you meet at the first sight, your dress with in a perfect settled way shines in the other person's eye, which directly influences and obliges the opposite per person to cognate what an amazing personality you have or he may be affected consequences of that comes with a positive attitude. Very good, perfect, so. As we are lead, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. So, uh, yes, yeah, as you see in this part, uh, it's going to start providing details, right? So uh, when you are in front of the people, they are going to, you are going to represent everything, a criteria, they are checking everything with you, the way that you speak, uh, the way, if you are nervous or not. But of course, the the clothes that you wear are going to be important, right? So definitely, that is something important. It's providing you the details on that one. So also, uh, it's telling you some other details, but also using different words like obliques. So it's not a must. You don't say it's a must. Uh, influences and obliques. Uh, another one is perfect settle, right? So with a perfect settle, way shines in other person's side. That means that if you use the perfect clothes, again, settled are like clothes, the way that you use the clothes. Uh, but you don't use clothes every time. You use different words. So it, it shows nice, professional again. So that's what is an essay. I mean, you are going to start providing details. It's important because of this, because of this other reason, and this and this and this. Okay. And at the end, we are not going to read the rest of it. But at the end, um, well, we can read just to check some other words actually. But um, at the end, the conclusion is so that's why you need to go and and be careful on the clothes that you are going to wear, maybe with different words, but that will be the be careful or take care of your clothes whenever you go to an interview if you are in Canada. 
because the topic at the beginning it says in Canada, right? So that would be the conclusion. Okay. So uh, let's continue with it because reading is nice and we practice. So let's see. Uh, the other two paragraphs are going to be for Carla Vasquez. Uh, what line is uh, here as we okay okay as we are living in judgment here so your outfit displays your imagine in another mind make a habit of reaction of a people that they did when you appearance at front of they that really appreciated you towards the success that dress best told you. And the other as well. Continue. No. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from top to bottom, your attire should thoroughly be based on the mother's need of interview a strategic era which allow you to think that we fit is appropriate. What could be the perfect thing to do that will be explained in the following paragraph by other group members, which elaborate more regarding this, which effective conclusion. Hey, very good, perfect. Thank you. Again, these are more details, right? So, uh, yeah, we live right now in in a time when everybody is looking at you, right? So the way that you look is very important. And look at this. There is another word for clothes, outfits. So we use three different words to say clothes, but we never use clothes. Clothes is so uh, common. So since we are writing an essay, we're going to use different words to refer to the same thing. So it's possible that one, and it's, it's going to give you certain things. Besides that one, yeah, there are uh, all. Uh -huh. Excuse me, uh, Eric. I think that uh, if you use outfit, it gives a uh, meaning more of the combination of clothes, color, and so on. Eh? Uh, that is a correct. Different style outfit and it depends on the occasion you know the outfit for a uh, go for a walk an outfit to practice sport my outfit to go to the party it's more the combination that is it so i, I um, don't know if, i don't know if this more a uh, girl thinks <laughs> actually no uh, it, it's for, it's for uh -huh. your outfit is your feels presentation in a different uh, situation. That is uh, it. Okay. Okay, so, but the word is regarding to the clothes, so we don't use clothes. So we use different words yes. depending on what you want to say, uh, nice words. So, and we use, I mean, my in this word, for example, I don't know if you know what is that one, but that is not that common. But in this kind of uh, uh, essays, we use words like that one. Bestow. What is bestow? Do you know what is to bestow? What? So said the address bestows you. You know, bestow is like you make a good, uh, um, a good food, a good mix of food. Success that dress bestows you. Uh, uh, yeah. Bring up. Um, something like that. Give so... you a fine, a fine, a fine outlook. Yeah, that, so in this case, the success that dress bestows you. Bestows is like gifts. So this you reflect that you are a successful that's person right. in the ah, way that you dress. Okay. So that okay. is it. But you don't say give, bestow. you say bestow. So I, as you can to see, bestow. not all the words are fancy words, but then suddenly you use one word that gives that little little thing to the paragraph that is going to be very nice so and as i was telling you at the end uh it should be like um why it's important to dress like this and this uh and this website if you want to check into that one 
uh, you are going to find all these essay examples. So okay. there are a lot, as you can see, and here you can see more categories, diversity, social justice, social media, friendship, bullying, slavery in the world, and all of those are different depending on the topic. So abortion, death penalty, a lot. So if you want to give it a shot on the structures, you can do that one. And a very good thing that you need to do is to practice. Definitely, we need to practice on this one. And we are not going to wait until tomorrow. We are going to start right now. We are not going to write an essay because an essay is too long. So but what we're going to do is going to write a paragraph. Okay, right now about whatever you want. In the paragraph, there should be an introductory topic, line, sentence, if you want, just sentence, or a little paragraph, one or two supporting ideas, or details, and then a conclusion, okay? That's going to be by, uh, to do it right now, so if you have questions, you can ask me. I'm going to actually uh, put here the book so you can check again to the structure that we're following. And I'm going to give you a few minutes, now, enough time for you to check into that one. And then you are going to share, or if we don't have time, we're going to share that tomorrow. But let's give it a practice. Let's see how it goes. A paragraph, okay, with a topic sentence, okay, for, with, sorry? For what day? Right now. We're going to write right now, oh. right away. Here in the class. So if you have questions, you can ask, and you are going to see that the absence, okay? And uh, remember that, I mean, one supporting idea is good because we, I mean, we're not going to spend a lot of time, right? So uh, one topic sentence, one supporting idea, and one conclusion, and we will be good about any topic, okay? So I'm gonna give you some time Give it a try, and I'm going to wait for for you to share what you have written. Okay, you can. Uh, I mean, what do you want? Do you want to say the paragraph, or do you want to send the paragraph in the chat? I don't know. What do you prefer? We can do it in uh, chat to practice to practice how to write. Yeah, I believe that there is a very good option. So in that way, you don't have to just say the words, but Right. You can use the dictionary. You can, I mean, you can do whatever you want. This is just a practice and it's the first practice that we're going to do. My uh, recommendation is for you to continue that one, but let's start. Okay. So if you agree, we're going to send the paragraph in the chat. You just type there. You can delete things before you send it. Check if everything is fine. And whenever you're ready, send it to the chat. Okay. So I will be here just in case you need help.
Hello, yes, we're going to write a paragraph. Not that long, Maria. Uh, it's going to be, uh, it has to be at least the topic sentence, at least one supporting idea, uh, one supporting detail, and the conclusion. And you need to write it here and there on the chat. So you just write it and send it, and we're going to check. Okay, thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure.
I already have the chair. I don't know if it is correct, but I'm trying. Oh. No, of course, don't worry. We're going to check. Yeah, I oh. also, I also am finished too. Yeah, I see here, George, uh, my base. Very good. I liked it. Very nice. Okay. And I'm checking right now what Wendy sent. So. Okay, so it's good. Very nice. Ah, I have the Ros Rosalina as well. It's talking about here. Oh my God. I have tried to to write it with my with the vocabulary. You know, I am I am confronting right now because I am reading a lot about the Venezuelan uh, food crisis. It is really bad. You know, it's really bad. And we need to be. Careful. I am. I am. I am. I am quite inspired to write about okay. it or to talk about it. Very good. That's nice. It's very good that you share with us. So, and I was checking it. It was good. So the three, uh, Wendy's was good as well. It was very short. It was good. And Rosa, it was also very nice. Liked it. And wow, that is a good one. Okay, uh, nice job, uh, Susana Hernandez. Maybe this is more like a story thing and not like a paragraph or an essay, but uh, the idea is to practice. It's a very good thing. Oh, I have the other one. Okay, Susana Hernandez. Okay, so the only thing that is missing here is the body that is like detail, the supporting, but the introduction and the conclusion is a very good thing, by the way. very nice.
Okay, let me check about the songs. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. Very nice. Oh, very good. So the compliment is very good, Marie. Very nice.
how the rest of the class finish. I don't know if you need more time. I have some of you here already, but I don't know if the rest still need a little bit more time. Very good, Susanna, and that's nice. In the beginning, I make a story. I understand the activity. Okay, very good, but that's why we are here. No worries. So, uh, it's a good practice, this one. So, in the future, if you have the chance, this is a very good thing that you can do. Okay, have an idea on what you want to write. And then write, find a structure on the the way that you want this to do, find vocabulary, and you can check. I mean, nowadays with the technology that we have, you can enter that one in some correctors of paragraphs or stories or anything like that. And they are going to tell you not only about uh, spelling of a word, but the structure itself. So we have, we have different options for us to check it out okay also remember that you are going to receive maybe this week or maybe the next week at the beginning you are going to receive the insa for survey remember that the insa for survey that is going to be done in the last class you don't have to do that before it's going to be done together in the last class and also remember that you are going to receive the survey for teacher. That is different. It's a, another survey that is for Inglés Corporativo and it's about the teacher. That is me. That you can do it yourself. So you can send that one. Not a problem. Also remember that for this Friday, we have two homeworks. The words, the three words or two words, two minimal, three or more is fine. Uh, oh, very good. Maria Innocent. another part. Ah, very good. That is a very nice conclusion. Nice. Okay, also we have to bring something to teach to the class. You are going to teach anything that you may want. So if you want to teach a recipe on how to cook, if you want to teach how to dye your hair, uh, how to put nails for women, I don't know, whatever you want to do and teach, you are going to present a process in that, okay? That will be for the next, the next Friday. Okay, so we have a few more minutes and we're going to do some practice. Nice. Um, we're going to do individual practices today. So let's see how it goes. Susana Beatriz. Sorry, teacher, I stand up uh, at the moment. I oh, don't worry, but you're here. <laughs> so, uh, bonjour, comment tell you? How are you? I found thing. Very nice. So, Susana, <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, what time do you usually go to your work in the morning? Mm, I I work at 
Um, eh, is a the my 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 eh, <laughs> eh, is also teacher, but is a I I work I work um in in, in Sevilla in how do you say Sierra? That is a name, so you can say Sierra. Uh -huh. Okay, it's a Sierra. Uh, this uh, accountant, the month. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. what time do you usually get up in the morning? Uh, specifically, I work in the morning. Um, specific is a report. Uh, uh, how do you, uh, it's a balance. Um, it's a report, a finance, finance report, um, okay. cash, cash flow, um, um, I don't know, teacher, it's a, it's a, tra como es? um, it's a, payment. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, at, I work in, in, Transfer is a system, a difference okay. as the system supports, support system. Super system, um, yeah. Super system. Um, is uh, the information, financial information. Very good. Uh, let me ask you, um, what do you usually do in your free time? Um, is the... In the finish, the month is a uh, is difficult free time, <laughs> uh, uh, but it's a uh, and uh, regular is a uh, at uh, the mint month, uh, it's a uh, uh, week, it's much less less work. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, by any chance. By any mm. chance, do you know what is the term bucket list? Um, how do you say, teacher? I don't understand. Yeah, by any chance, do you know the term bucket list? Bucket. Bucket list. Ah, yes. Yes, uh, it's a checklist. It's a check. It's a checklist. It's a... Uh, uh, Rotum, rotum, come on, rotum, routine. <laughs> okay, no, actually, it's a checklist that is that is correct, but it's a checklist of things that you really want to do uh, before you die. Let's say, for example, if you want to travel to other countries, if you want to, I don't know, uh, eat certain kind of food or uh, jump from an airplane parachute things like that so that is a bucket list i want to ask you do you have a bucket list what do and, you want to do and i don't know teacher is a uh, with a uh, different time um uh, it's, uh, it's at the moment with my family is uh, I go I go to the go to the beach. Um, I don't know. It's a a point the noise. <laughs> okay, very good. Perfect. It's Thank a a, a money. I is a half money too. <laughs> It's a dependent money. <laughs> Depends, definitely. We understand. Okay, very good. Thank you for your time, Susana. And uh, let's go now. With, well, before that one, I was checking uh, Carla Vasquez, the one that you sent. Very good. It was very complete. Very nice. Okay. Uh, so, Maria Elena, hello. Hello, teacher. Hello. 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 How are you today? Um, a little busy. And big day. <laughs> really, yeah. For me, it was also you know, 
everybody was like the report, the, the meeting, the I don't know. I had, you know, I had three times during the day, I was in two meetings at the same time. I was saying yes, hitting, no hitting. I don't know. I don't know what I did. I did. <laughs> it was crazy. I, I need in the morning um ingress in a cobble uh, 120 uh, um, families in the morning and I need to finish a presentation for tomorrow in the afternoon I am going to Guadalupe in Department San Vicente uh, for um session with odontology odontology I don't know how to say odontology yeah like uh, the dentist from from dentist from US uh, for a families uh, that um, family circle and finish more or by 3 p.m. in a travel San Salvador. Oh, it's, I, I guess you need a massage, so you have to tell your husband there. <laughs> yes. Okay, very good. So tell me, uh, what do you usually do on your free time? Um, I like cook, and I am like... um. How do you say levantar pesas? Ah, you do weightlifting. Weightlifting. Hey, yes. So you are the one that says to your husband, go and wash the dishes. All right, but <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You have good. the control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh well, uh the question of tonight and maybe the other nights is. Um, do you have a bucket list? What would you like to do? Something is something very nice that you really would like to do before the end of the world. Mm, well, with my sister, um, we can uh, go Paris. Okay. She living in Italy for a year and we can travel together with my mom. Mm, that sounds like a good plan. So you're going to go to Italy. That's good. And eat real pizza, right? Because pizza has <laughs> yes. not, it's not real pizza. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that the only thing that you want to do? I mean, is there any other thing that you would like to do before you die? Mm, for the moment, it's difficult, but I dream um go the mountain um i don't know in in our country uh we can isalco san vicente uh santa ana and san miguel and i can go the far ah, okay that is a good plan that's very nice yeah i mean and that is it's not that difficult. You maybe if you organize in some vacations, maybe you will be able to do it very soon. Mm -hmm. Yes, and to with the uh, friends, uh, girlfriend, no friends, girlfriend is not so good. <laughs> Actually, it's, yes, uh, you know, in English you can uh, say my my girlfriend, and it's not a problem. Uh, <laughs> but this um yes, my my friends, but all these uh, girls, uh, yeah. four girls friends and we can go parapente no sé cómo se dice tampoco oh that is a good one this is skydiving i guess something like that yeah but is we can go to parapente <laughs> and do you know a place where you can go and do that one are there some companies that offer that yes yes is mm -hmm. um when a plan when my doctor give me a like, give me change give me opportunity okay. my doctor we can go <laughs> okay that sounds like a good thing how much is that do you know do you have an idea 
I don't know, in this month, in 2021, 20, this month, I see the doctor and maybe, um, I don't know, program the operation again. Oh, <laughs> and sorry. the next day, maybe next day, next year, may, maybe. Okay. Okay, so I hope everything goes well into that one. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Thank you, Maria Elena. Thank you, too. Uh, let's see. A volunteer? Oh, yes. I would I would like to share my pop list. Uh, tell us. We want to know, definitely. Yes. You know, I... I have dreamed for a long time ago to visit uh, Asia with my two doctors before they get married. Mm, it, I, I, uh, yes, it, it would be for me the, the best things to do before I died. And which country would you like yes, to go? Yes, Japan? Yes. No, I would like to, to visit uh, Thailand. Thailand and uh, Malaysia, all these small Asian countries, you know, Singapore, it would be nice. I have I have studied with a lot of colleagues from these countries and it was really nice. And therefore I would, uh, I dream to share with my daughters such a trip. That sounds a very and good thing. It would, it would be good without my husband, you know, only the three girls. <laughs> that sounds like a plan very good that's nice yes. and Thailand I was reading that Thailand is not that expensive so that is a good thing so I mean you yes, enjoy the should, trip it should be yeah it should be uh, quite cheap you know to to have to travel through these small countries in Asia that sounds like a plan you know I'm going to research about that yes. one and maybe maybe we we meet there <laughs> <laughs> yes yes it would be nice <laughs> Very you good, know, thank you. Backpack. Yeah, okay. something like that one, right? <laughs> Eating yes. food there, the strange food and things like that one. Nice. Mm. Yes. Perfect. Thank you, my dear. Anybody else wants to share your bucket list? Me, teacher. Okay. I want to share my bucket list. Okay. Uh, it's long, teacher. Of course, go ahead. Um, I want to travel with my sister to Europe, specific Italy. Um, the other, I want to learn, I want to play the guitar teacher. Yeah. The other, I want to, to run the marathon, complete marathon. Okay. But, I required a lot of preparation before. I know. That. Yeah. The other, I want to, to learn um, to enjoy swim, swim, swim. Swimming. Swimming, yes, yeah, swimming, okay. because I am very anxiety. Anxiety? An anxious. 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 And in this moment, I don't enjoy because my breath, uh -huh. my breath is not good. Mm -hmm. okay. But I need to learn to breathe the right breath for that specific. Um, yeah, because my son is. Swimming, swimming, how do you say, teacher? Athlete. Swimming. Ah, he's an athlete, okay. Yes, and right. it's important. Um, in the other, <laughs> I want to, to uh, begin my own business. And I want to include my sisters. Mm, very good. This what kind my, of business? Okay. And specific related to the 
possible the chocolate pro teacher, mm -hmm. but the That's natural, awesome. the natural, because I believe that the chocolate has um, a lot of benefit for the health. Okay, very good, very interesting. You have specific things, and I believe that you are able to run all this with time, of course. Before, before I left this work teacher. <laughs> yeah, we have time. It's never too late. So, uh, and the good thing that you can do is to start researching and check what you can do. So, yeah. very good. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Thank you for sharing. Okay, my friends. So, this was the class of tonight. Do you have any question before we finish? No questions. Very good. So, then we're going to check the attendance and then we're going to go to bed. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Yes, Good. Alejandra Michelle Hueso Najera. Present teacher. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good night. Good night. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erazo. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Present. Good. Good, Good night, everybody. Good night. Mm -hmm. Manuel Antonio Palma. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Present chair. Good. And good night. Good night. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good night. Good night. Silvia Soleima Rodríguez de González. Present teacher. Good for you is the one one of tonight. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Perfect. So, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a very good night. Rest very well and see you tomorrow. Dream in English. See you tomorrow. Blessings. Okay. Good night. Have a good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. It rains. Hello, Mario. Uh, do you have any questions? Anything that I can help you with? Uh, 